What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Jessie's Journey, or if you're new here, hello! Welcome! My name is Jessie, I'm an American digital nomad. I travel the world full-time teaching English online and filming my adventures for YouTube on this channel. I also post an occasional travel tip and trick like this video here today. So if that's the type of content you like, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you get notified anytime I post in the future. Now, if you've been following my journey for a while, you have heard me talk a few times now about how when I first became an expat and moved abroad to live in Prague for a year, I was really bad with money. I mean, really bad with money. I mean, like, it literally took me about a year to fix everything that I messed up during my year living in Prague. And mm, who knows what life could have been. It's not good to play a what if game, but I can imagine that if I had lived a little bit differently when I was first an expat, a baby expat in the world, I might still be living in Prague or my life might look a little bit different than it does now. And like I said, I don't want to play the what if game, but how I did learn a lot of important lessons from that time. And I know a lot of people who watch this channel are considering moving abroad or are just moving abroad or yeah just curious as to what life abroad is like and so I figured if I can share my tips and tricks here for when it comes to finance it will help other people not get into the situation that I was in when I was living abroad so definitely please I beg you please take my advice I wish I had this video when I first moved abroad it would have been life-changing and um, I really hope that it will serve somebody well Okay, let's get into the video. This is the five different savings accounts, sinking funds, any digital nomad or expat should have when they are moving abroad. Okay, so you're considering moving abroad and you need to know what comes next. And honestly, a big part of moving abroad is having money. You don't need a ton of money, but you do need to have it. This point is kind of more dri driven towards expats and less towards digital nomads because startup costs are a little bit lower for digital nomads than they would be for somebody permanently moving somewhere. However, it definitely is a thing that exists for digital nomads. So keep this account in mind, but I'm gonna call this savings account just generally Generally, your startup cost savings account. Now, most places, if you're going to be moving as an expat, you will have to apply for a work visa. And with that work visa, it makes you legal to be paid in the country that you're choosing to live in. However, there is usually a caveat that comes with that visa, and that is you have to have a set amount of money already in your bank account just to prove that you will be able to get by until you get settled, get a job, and are just generally in a routine of things living abroad. For me, when I moved to the Czech Republic, I believe I needed a required amount of $6,000 in my bank account. Now, I did have people that I met who when they moved abroad, they just had somebody loan them that money. They got the bank note that they needed to show that they had the money in the account. Once they got their visa, they transferred that money back to them. However, I think it's really important to take these things into consideration. They make a set amount of number for a reason. Um, and you can look, depending on the country you want to move to, of what those nuances are towards the country. I was just looking, one thing I'm considering doing in my life because I'm starting to tucker out of being a digital nomad and want a little bit more of a permanent placement for maybe like a year. Side note there. Um, but something I was looking into was getting a work holiday visa in Australia because you can do that as an American pretty affordably for a year. And I believe you need about three to four thousand dollars in a savings account just to show that you have enough money to cover your startup costs while you're there. And I cannot stress the importance of having this fund but also having it just be for startup costs. There are so many little things that come with startup costs. Um, first getting your rent, you have to pay first month's rent, usually a security deposit. Sometimes you have to find, pay a finder's fee, you have to pay paperwork to for paperwork to be done for your visa sometimes you have to travel for your visa i know when i was living in the czech republic i had an interview in poland for my visa so i had to travel to and from that um so many little things that pop up um that if you don't have a job depending on where you're moving to and what 
the type of career you're in looks like. Um, it's definitely necessary to have this money to cover you until you get your career started. Um, side note, if you're moving to Europe, usually you have to interview in person, so that's why these startup cost funds are so important because you're not going to the country with a job. However, you're, you're going to Asia to teach, and I'm just speaking from ESL experience because that's what my career field is in. But if you're going to Asia, usually you have a job lined up before you go, so startup costs don't need to be quite as high because you know you'll be getting paid quickly. However, if you're going somewhere and you don't know how or when you're going to get paid until you're there, always a good idea to have a set amount of startup costs. Um, and I heard somebody say once about three to six months of living expenses is usually a good safe bet for when it comes to startup costs just because you know that if it takes some time to get a job, then you will be covered for that amount of time. Now, when it comes to being a digital nomad, this is maybe not ne as necessary. Of course, there are startup costs with flying to where you want to go and renting your apartment for the first time. But if you're like me, where I travel on a month to month basis, I usually stay for about one month in a city or country and then head on to the next place. If that's more so your style, definitely you don't need a ton of money when it comes to startup costs. Um, and that will tie into another point I'm going to make very, very soon. Um, however, definitely something to consider having and set aside before or you take this big leap into your adventure. The second account that I think every expat and digital nomad or really just human being in general needs to have is an, is an emergency fund. Emergencies happen, people. It's a fact of life. That's what life is. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's messy, and things happen. And it's important to be prepared so that when those things do happen, you're not financially strained, you don't have to go into debt to cover them, and you're just overall secure. Now. When it comes to becoming an expat and moving abroad for the very first time, a lot of times those startup costs will bleed kind of into the emergency fund because let's be honest, most of the emergencies that are going to pop up are going to have to do with startup costs. Maybe you have to travel on a whim, like I said, for your visa and that ends up being an something you weren't budgeting for so it's an emergency and you have to pull from that startup cost fund. However, I think it is so important that once you have yourself established and you have a job as an expat and you're getting a steady income from that job, any additional money that you have from startup costs goes into an emergency fund and you should have that as a completely separate thing. Also as a digital nomad, this is so important because lots of times digital nomads are usually freelancers and are not employed through specific companies or if they are it's a little more laid back and so you have to be really on top of your money and shit happens can I swear on this channel have I sworn on here before I think I have shit happens we're gonna keep it <laughs> anyways I always have been recommended by financial people that I've spoken with to at least at the bare minimum have bare minimum have $1,000 set aside for emergencies and now here's the kicker too your startup costs can be in the bank account that you're going to constantly be using when you're abroad, although if you are being an expat, it's most likely going to be in your favor to get a local bank account if you're going to be there for like a year or more or even more than like six months because, you know, pesky like international fees. However, the savings fund needs to be high. Dog, um, the savings fund needs to be in a separate account that you don't have quite as easy access to, but you can get the money within 24 hours if an emergency happened. For me, I have a specific credit union that I keep my emergency fund in. I can transfer the money from that to my main checkings account, checking account, which is with a completely different bank, um, and I can get that within, I think, like a two hour window it can transfer. So if an emergency were to happen, I could have that money quickly. Um, however, I do have a bank card with it, but I do not use that bank card, and so I'm never tempted to pull from that. And I think, I mean, this is probably the biggest point that can relate, oh my goodness, dog. <laughs> this is the biggest point that can relate to just anybody, whether or not you travel and live full-time abroad or work online, whatever it may be. Anybody should have this. There was recently a government shutdown in America, and it was shocking to see the posts on Facebook of people who didn't have money to cover their expenses because of this emergency, and they weren't getting paid. And it's so important to have this fill in at least a thousand dollars in case something happens but I honestly once I I didn't have okay backtrack when I was living in Prague here's the gossip I did not have an emergency fund and I was in debt I was in a lot of debt because I didn't have enough money to cover for the periods of time that I wasn't working 
I had gotten a part-time job in a school at the end of March, but I didn't get paid till the end of April because I couldn't get paid until I got my visa approved and it just took a long time. So I worked April and May, but then the summer hit. And so I didn't get paid June, July, or August, although I started teaching online at the end of, or beginning of August because I realized I had no money. <laughs> but then I went full-time in September. And had I been full-time at the beginning of the end, in the beginning of April time when I was getting paid I would have gotten a stipend over the summer to cover me through but because I was part-time and switched to full-time with the company I didn't get covered at all and so it would have been really nice to have an emergency fund to cover my living expenses for that unplanned emergency of not having an income and part of that was just my own stupidity of not knowing what I was in for and being a newbie in the field and figuring that out um, and not planning accordingly um, but yeah also super important to have and you never know what can happen when it comes to emergencies you could get sick you could break something really important that you need to replace whether that be your laptop if you work online as a digital nomad your iPhone maybe something gets stolen um, and maybe you get laid off and you don't have a job so emergency funds are so important um, and I'm now to the point so when I was in Prague I had like maybe in my wealthiest of days 50 bucks in a savings account that I eventually would spend on beer um, but after that, when I came home, I was able to build up an $1,000 emergency fund, and now I have about six-ish, a little under six months saved um, that I've been slowly working on because I've also had other financial goals that I've been working towards as well and saving money for that. If you watch my bare minimum, bare minimum budget video, which I will link on the screen of how much money I need to make at a very minimum to be able to cover all my expenses, you'll be able to do the math and figure out how much money I have in a savings account um, because the amount of money I saved, I went through my budget and I looked and I said, this is how much I need every month to cover my expenses and live comfortably and feel good and not be stressing about money. Um, and then I doubled that, or doubled, tripled, quadrupled, six, I times it by six to get to the amount of money that I wanted for six months. So you need to figure out what amount of money you're comfortable with, but you definitely need to have an emergency fund. It is so, so important. Shit happens. Account number three is similar to account number two in the sense that it is an emergency fund. However, it's something I've specifically started doing within the last couple months to prepare for a very specific type of emergency. And that is my travel home emergency fund. Now, when I had been living in Prague, um, and just generally throughout Europe, anytime I've had an extended period of time in Europe, I have been able to find flights at the drop of a hat no more than 300 bucks because I fly discount airlines, it's how you save money, I don't need luxury, I sleep on the plane anyways, so it's fine, I don't need to be in first class. However, when I went to Asia at the end of last year, I think the cheapest flight that I was ever able to find when I was just nosying around and looking on flights was about 700 bucks and now that's talking about like if I were to book like the very next day because if an emergency were to happen you wouldn't really have like three months to plan for it to get home and so for me I realized yes I could dip into account number two my emergency savings fund however I wanted to keep that separate for other types of emergencies and this was an emergency I wanted to plan for you never know what's going to happen and um, what's gonna pop up back at home um, especially with family and friends unfortunately like I said life's messy things happen um, and so for me it was important to set aside that amount of money in case I ever really needed to book a flight on a whim to get home quickly and I realized this when I was in Vietnam um, and I don't know if I've actually talked about this on my channel but I perforated my eardrum which basically means I got a hole in my eardrum um, and I was in so much pain for like two weeks um, and it was to the point where I was talking with my mom and she's like I think you should come home because you don't want to lose your hearing abroad. The doctor I was talking to didn't speak English. We communicated through Google Translate and it was a mess. Um, and if I needed emergency surgery, I wasn't gonna be comfortable having it done in Vietnam. Um, and so therefore I was gonna have to at least go somewhere else to have it done um, or come back to get it fixed. Um, now, luckily, I was able to resolve that issue and after many months my ear feels healed and okay and we're looking good um, but it was something I definitely realized that like in the moment I didn't feel comfortable with the amount of money I had booking a flight home like two days later because it would have completely drained all my like savings that I had and I would have to basically start from scratch of rebuilding my emergency fund. So when that happened, I realized I have an opportunity now to do something great and plan ahead. What life? 
that's basically all finance is. It's just planning ahead for things that you can't actually plan for. Uh, but I started saving money and it was a little increments at a time, a hundred bucks here, 50 bucks there. Anytime I got paid, I would set aside, you are so needy. Uh, I would set aside a little bit of money so I could save up in case something were to happen. And now I just have that in a completely different savings account. If I am abroad and an emergency happens and I need to come home either for myself or for somebody else, I know I can do that and not be stressed. Ashley, do you see my dog right now? Do you see what's happening? What, what, what is happening? Mm -mm. I love you, but why? Why? Alrighty, savings count number four is the kicker and that is taxes. Taxes, taxes. Is taxes. It was just tax season here in America and I had that fun reminder of how much money I had to send to the government because I am a digital nomad and um, because of the way my paycheck works um, I don't have taxes withdrawn. I'm technically considered a freelancer even though I'm employed through a company to teach. I create my own hours and schedule. So, so important. I had to put separate money account separate money aside in an account to save so I had that money when it came to tax season. Now, when it comes to being an American, this is a really important thing. If you are an expat and you are living in another country with a work visa, you still have to pay taxes not only to that country but also to America. America is one of the only countries that does life like that so very important to take that into consideration make sure you're putting enough money aside so that you can cover your taxes when you come back to the US there is a foreign income taxation I don't know what the specific name of it is and I am by no means a tax professional so if you're considering becoming a digital nomad or an expat or you already are I highly recommend talking to somebody I have an amazing accountant here in the States that I work with anytime I come back and we email constantly I have to pay my taxes quarterly because of my business that I have and so I'm constantly in contact with her um, so I have enough money set aside but I just can't stress the importance of this when it comes to your finances ideally we don't want to be in debt for anything but it's even worse to be in debt to the IRS than like say having student loan debt or I don't know like a car payment debt or whatever credit card debt you would have consumer debt IRS debt is very bad make sure you're saving money to pay your taxes both in the country that you're in and the place of your home country and I don't know what that's like for people who are like Australian or British or with Brexit happening who even knows what's gonna happen with that but make sure you're talking to a local professional so that they can give you insight of specifically what you need and if you're digital nomad make sure you're putting 30% at least of your paycheck aside into savings so that you can pay your taxes when tax season hits and if you're saving too much then congratulations you have extra money to burn at the end I actually when I, over the last year being a full-time digital nomad, I was saving 30% of my paycheck every month and I only really needed to be saving about 20%. So I had a pretty good chunk of change set aside, which I invested into something specific that I'm not gonna talk about now, um, but definitely something very, very important um, that I set aside that money for. Um, and oh, now I kinda wanna tell the secret, but I'm really bad at keeping secrets. I can't tell you the secret of what I invested in for, but it's something that, is life altering. We'll leave it at that. And if you want to try to guess, guarantee you won't guess, but you can leave comments down below. Okay, so I've talked a lot about boring investments, savings, funds, which yes, we all have to do them, but they're not necessarily the most fun. So this final one that I'm going to talk about, number five, is the fun one. It's why we travel. It's why you're a digital nomad. It's why you're an expat. It's to see the world. And so our final savings fund that we're making is for travel, our fun travel fund. Now, definitely I am all for impulse trips. Most of my adventures have been impulse decisions, but I can see the difference of that from when I was living in Prague making impulse decisions on trips and now that I'm financially secure and making impulse trips there's definitely a difference. Had I been more financially wise with my money when I was living in the Czech Republic I would have just set aside you know like 30 to 50 bucks every month and I would have easily been able to save up to travel frequently. And here's the kicker too, depending on where you're living or where you're going, it's super affordable to travel within continents. So for example, I was living in the Czech Republic and I did a four day trip to Salzburg, Austria for my birthday. It was my birthday trip to myself. Um, 
to go on a bus from the Czech Republic to Austria cost $15 one way and then I think it was like 10 back so super cheap I stayed at a hostel for a couple bucks a night um, I think no more than 10 to $12 a night um, I went to the grocery store so I wasn't eating at restaurants for all of my trips and I did splurge and go on a sound of music tour which if you didn't see that video links on the screen it was so much fun it's probably one of my favorite countries I've been to but recently I did that entire trip for just around like a hundred maybe 150 bucks um, but I don't think I spent that much um, and that's something I could have easily saved up for and prepared for as I was doing my finances um, I was because it was my birthday I was gifted birthday money and so that's how I paid for that trip whereas previously I made stupid decisions which how I paid for trips um, on credit cards and that got me in debt which is why it took me a year to pay off all my money and get my finances in order after leaving the Czech Republic but like I said that's another tangent side note for another day um, however it's super easy to save up a few bucks here a few bucks there skip going out for coffee put that five dollars aside to get a coffee in Barcelona or Italy or wherever you're at in the world save that money for that instead of going out and getting that that date in wherever you're based at um, and you'll be able to fund travel adventures very very soon set your goals set your plans and then keep saving for that in mind okay if you made it to the end of this video congratulations I feel like I've been talking forever and um, so thank you for watching like I said if you made it here good on you great on you you're the best double thumbs up to you make sure you give this video a double thumbs up I don't think you could do that if you liked it and as always make sure you subscribe share this video with your friends family strangers that whole drill that you can say um, I'll be back very very soon with another video but until then guys bye